What's going on beasts and welcome to today's video, which is going to be how to program CrossFit. Now this is more specifically for beginners. So if you are a seasoned coach or athlete, this may be way above your level of learning, um, but you could probably still take something from this video uh, that would assist your programming itself. So today's video is about how to program for CrossFit if you're a beginner and you've never done it before. Why this is important? I generally see a lot of people programming their own workouts and when I do see them, the one thing that they miss is purpose. And that's what we're gonna cover in this video is how to create a program with purpose. Today we're gonna to cover what is CrossFit. It's uh, something that is important to know if you're trying to program for CrossFit to know exactly what it is. Uh, progressive overload and the principles behind progressive overload, the basics of CrossFit, uh, and it's programming for beginners, common mistakes that I see, and then there's gonna be a sample template that you guys can use to help you make your program a little bit easier. Now, this video is all about the individual workouts. We're not looking at a week, month, uh, a year block of CrossFit. We're just looking at the individual workouts that you would program throughout one week of training. What is CrossFit? CrossFit is constantly varied functional movements performed at high intensity. It seeks to develop the 10 modalities of fitness, which are below, but if you need to know them, strength, speed, power, stamina, endurance, flexibility, coordination, agility, balance, and accuracy. So these 10 uh, modalities of fitness is what we are looking at seeking at developing within our program. Progressive overload. This is super important when you wanna know how to improve not only your strength, your conditioning, but also your gymnastic ability. Uh, and progressive overload is the principle that's widely used in strength programs around the world. For many, it's merely just understanding the why of progressive overload that will help you understand how important it is for progression. Progressive overload is the gradual increase in stress placed upon the body during training. Things to keep in mind with progressive overload, and these are super important, so make sure you listen up. Increasing load isn't the only way to increase strength. Generally, it is the easiest way, but it's not the only way that you can improve your strength goals, as well as any conditioning-based goals as well. Volume, intensity, tempo, and variation of the movement are all other ways that you can achieve that same result. It's just not as sexy as adding five to 10 kilos to your bar. Moving on, let's get into the crux of the video, which is the basics of programming checklist. So the first thing you must ask yourself is what are you trying to achieve in the program or what is the purpose of the program? This is gonna be the most important part of anything you're trying to do, especially when you're programming just an individual workout is because what are you looking at getting out of that individual workout? Now, I've put up on the slide as you'll be able to see uh, some different things that you need to keep in mind when programming your specific workout. So is it gonna be a pull day, a push day, or is it gonna be a leg dominant base day? This doesn't mean you can't add in other movements that are complement those particular movements, but what is the main muscle group you're looking at targeting? Then from there, what modality of CrossFit we are looking at hitting. What I've always been taught is a strong grip, core and back will make you successful at CrossFit. So if you're focusing either on the posterior chain, the core or the grip mainly throughout your workout, can also give you a bit more variation to it, but you don't necessarily need to focus on that. It's just a secondary to the pull push legs. Finally, is your workout a sprint based workout or is it a long endurance component, which is where anaerobic and aerobic comes in? Of course, there's a lot more specificity that you can find in that, that kind of bracket, the anaerobic versus aerobic, but for the sake of this video, is it gonna be a short, fast, sprint based workout or is it gonna be a long, draggy, chipper style workout? That's what we choose. I've had a little bit of an example of, let's say your day of training, you start off with Fran. Fran, obviously we all know 2159 thrusters and pull-ups and I've just broken it down into this little easy table so that you understand what you're looking at when you are looking at Fran. It's a moderate volume workout. It's an anaerobic workout for most people. It can be completed within two to five minutes. Um, it is majorly push and upper body based workout. So we've got thrusters with that pushing movement, pull-ups with the uh, pulling movement, which is an upper body pull grip and it's at a light weight. 
So if you were to program that, this is the recommendation of what I would program tomorrow, which is Christine. So Christine is more of a leg dominant workout. It is more aerobic for most people as beginners generally take between 15 to 20 minutes to finish Christine. The weight for the workout is at a moderate weight. For many people, body weight deadlifts aren't that heavy, um, but still can be for some who are a lighter body weight and a little bit weaker on the barbell. Uh, from there, we've got an explosive plyometric movement, which requires things like coordination, speed, and power. Uh, and it's mostly a lower body pull slash posterior chain workout. So a complete opposite to Fran, which is mostly upper body. This one is mostly lower body. So that's just like, if you were to look at two separate days of programming, that's how you'd break it up from the start. Now, obviously you wanna learn how to program your own individual workout. Now, firstly, I've come up with a template to help you kind of a bit of a guideline of how to choose the rep range, the intensity, the load, the time, and the amount of movements that you can program for that workout. And it's in this basic programming template, which will be in the link in the description. So you can download that one and have it uh, for yourself and you can use it to create your workouts. And I'm just gonna run through exactly how I would create a workout using this particular template. So first things first, we wanna choose a muscle group. So for this instance, we've chosen push. So we've got an upper body push. Um, from there, what kind of volume are you looking at in your program? Um, do we want to have between one and 30 reps? So more of like a Grace Isabel kind of sprint workout. Are we looking at 31 to 75 reps? Maybe something similar to Fran. Um, maybe something in that like 15, 12, nine rep range, or we're we going high reps, you know, long distance Murph style workouts. Uh, for this one, we've chosen a moderate rep range. From there, the intensity. Now, one thing to keep in mind about intensity, if you're going to choose a workout like Murph and you're gonna have 40 plus minutes of cardio your way, you're probably not gonna choose a high intensity, are you? Because you'll be dead by the 20 minute mark. So just make sure that obviously you are smart with the intensity things. The longer workouts will have lower intensities. The short, fast workouts will have higher intensities. But this one we've chosen high because who doesn't love a full send? From there, what kind of load are you looking for? Similar to the intensity side of things, if you're gonna go super high rep range, you wouldn't wanna go super high load, um, only if you can physically handle it. Uh, for most people, doing 80 plus percent of your max squat clean for 100 reps is probably not advisable. So obviously with the lower reps, you wanna pick a heavier weight, the higher reps, a lighter weight, but obviously that can be manipulated depending on what you're trying to hit but with this shows moderate time period we've gone for short so about five minutes and the movements we're going to choose two movements your sweet spot for movements is normally between two and three for most workouts because couplets and triplets is what makes up core of crossfit and it's super easy to remember it allows you to move through movements a little bit easier and you're not attacking the same stimulus often so the workout of the day i've came up with Pretty straightforward, it is for time. It is three rounds, 10 shoulder to overhead, 10 pull-ups at 60 and 40, which ticks off all those boxes that we've just selected. If you look at it, it's within that 40 to 70% max load of my 1RM. Uh, we've got 60 repetitions there, so it makes it a perfect workout for that moderate range. It is mostly pushing movement and it has a complementary movement like the pull-up that's going to allow you to break the, the push jerks hit the pull-ups, maintaining high intensity, and then jumping back into the shoulder overhead with pretty fresh shoulders to go for another set. Um, and we're just attacked for more things. So let's say that was our first workout of the day. We're gonna go through a second workout. We've chosen legs, high volume, low intensity. We've gone with a light load, long workout, and four movements this time. Um, the workout would look something like this, a 20 minute AM wrap, 10 cows on the bike, 10 meter front rack lunge, 10 bar facing burpees, 10 meter front rack lunge, 10 hang cleans at 30 and 20. So you can see uh, it allows you to program workout one for the day and then change the stimulus. So you're not just doubling up on the same workouts all the time. Um, high rep range, low load. Let's jump into some common mistakes. Generally when we see beginners program, a few common things come up. And one of the first ones is that the workout becomes too hard or too complicated. An example of this is this random workout I've just concocted on the screen. Um, even though it does look weird and it probably 
for many of you, you've just cringed having a quick glance over the movements and the workout itself. The main thing that comes up to me is that this is a common workout that I see a lot of people programming. So the main thing, if we start from the top of the arrows and work our way down, there's way too many weighted movements. People will have kettlebell, dumbbell, and then a barbell in the same workout. You don't want too many weighted movements because it puts way too much stress on your body doesn't give it that uh, ability to, you know, chop and change between movements that are going to give you a high heart rate effect uh, without completely destroying your lower back, which is a common theme with lots of weighted movements. They are all pulling movements too in this instance, which means too much volume. You've got a clean and jerk, a kettlebell swing, and a deadlift, which is three pulling movements straight there. Um, obviously, we want to try and avoid that. You, you want your workout, if it was a pulling workout, to be uh, majority pull, but you don't want it to be so majority where all the movements are just pulling movements and you're going to completely destroy yourself. Of course, if it's a short, fast sprint workout, you might be able to get away with that. But in this instance, because it's 20 minutes, your lower back is going to be cooked. The same movement, um, I do see double unders and running uh, programmed quite often. I know the triple three workout, which was like three kilometer row, 300 double unders, three mile run. I mean, it has its benefits, but for most people, double undering and running is such a similar movement. Your Achilles and calves are gonna be cooked. Um, combining those with a word of caution can be an issue uh, in workouts that are long, such as this one. Um, so just be mindful, you don't wanna program the same stimulus twice, back to back, or even in general, in the same workout without having a particular point or a purpose to the reason why you're doing it. Of course, confusing rep scheme is actually really important, even though it seems silly. Oh, you know, what does it matter what the reps are? Like, you know, you should be able to remember it. Imagine mid-workout, you're like, holy crap, how many reps am I supposed to do with this next movement? When it's too confusing, you think about it too much, which can cause issues with your workout. I generally keep the workout very similar, like, you know, 5, 10, 15, 21, 15, 9, something that is easily rememberable uh, for yourself that you're able to do with the workout, or I like to match the workout with the time domain. So instead of 30, 15, 20, 50, what it says on the board, um, I just do 20, 20, 20, maybe 50 in that case. So all the actual movements themselves are the same. Maybe one is different depending on what it is, but keeping it similar, keeping it the same, keeps it less confusing. Um, the next common mistake is workouts that are too heavy or too light. And a good example of this one is the one that's on the screen. Uh, we've got 30, 20, 10 snatches and bar facing burpees, which is great volume. Uh, it is great movement combo, and to be honest, would be a pretty good workout. However, are you trying to train for the games? Because 50 and 35 kilos for the snatch, you are probably going to kill yourself. Uh, I don't know if any of you remember the 2021 uh, assault bike workout with the 50 kilo snatches and the assault bike calories. That was only 21.59 and it destroyed even the best of athletes. So to increase the rep range more and go at that same kind of load, you're going to hurt yourself and it's just not going to be uh, a good technical workout for you. So easy ways to change this, if we look back at our template, we got a high rep range there, so obviously we've got 120 repetitions. Um, we want the workout to be light. Like I mentioned earlier, if you're gonna go high reps, you wanna go lighter on the load. Um, so I've uh, put a suggestion is either 30 and 20 for the snatches, so nice and light, something like a Randy weight that you can touch and go or almost muscle snatch them, or going for a dumbbell instead. That will make that workout a little bit more bearable, 22 and a half, 15, something nice and easy. Finally, Probably, I think everyone in any version or level of programming would agree with this one, which is leaning towards your strengths. I mean, how often do you program and you're like, hmm, which movement do I really want to do? And you're like, okay, I'm really good at push jerks. It's gonna be a pushing day again for the fifth day in a row, God damn it. Uh, of course, people lean towards their strengths because they enjoy it more, they're the more enjoyable movements, but, don't purely program towards your strengths because you're only going to get better at your strengths and you 
and you get worse at your weaknesses. Um, so keep that in mind when looking at programming. Don't just focus on what you're good at, focus on everything, focus on the purpose and the broad picture and what you're trying to achieve in general with CrossFit. Obviously, constantly varied is one of the base things in the CrossFit's methodology and its description. So make sure you keep constantly varied. Finally, the sample program templates. This is the full sample program. Once again, downloadable in the description. We have our volume, intensity, load time, movement template. We've also got the questionnaire that you can answer underneath. And then from there on the other side of the screen, I have just a little bit of a breakdown of the workouts themselves. So uh, to save you thinking, day one, you've got a pull, which is lower body pull. So lower body pulling movements, just for an example, deadlifts is a straight up one. Um, you could consider kettlebell swings, both lower and upper body as it's a hip hinging movement. Um, plenty of other things, uh, snatches in some form, uh, sumo deadlifts, uh, sumo deadlift high pulls, all lower body pulling movements uh, that are good that you can program for your first workout. Um, pushing, uh, obviously horizontal, bench press, push-ups, um, You've got a few movements there that you can work with uh, that would be good. Uh, burpees, anything that you're pretty much side onto the floor with, uh, that could be your main mover for that day. And then legs, just front squats, back squats, overhead squats, any sort of squatting, uh, goblet squats, lunging, etc. And then when we go to the other side of the program, it's now upper body work. So upper body pulling movements are simple. Pretty much anything on the rig is upper body pulling. So pull ups, chest of ours, muscle ups. Uh, ring rows, etc., all those type of movements, um, hang, any hang dumbbell snatches, hang dumbbell cleans, all your upper body pulling movements. Upper body pushing, um, I've put horizontal, but it's going to be vertical. Um, so overhead press, uh, push jerks, um, handstand push-ups, all your overhead movements, and then once again, legs to finish off. The reason there's a rest day every third day is that's just the uh, CrossFit prescription, working three days, resting one, doing that constantly. You can obviously break it up however you see fit. And that's gonna be my example of I've programmed some workouts. You can steal those workouts, you can use them for your first week, and then you can program yourself another week. Uh, but that's some straightforward workouts using that format uh, for yourself. But that is how to program for CrossFit for beginners. If you enjoy the video, of course, like the video, subscribe to the channel for more content. If there's something that you that I didn't mention that you want me to show uh, in the next video, do, please do comment down below um, and I can answer any of the questions that you may have that you are confused about with your programming. On the next episode of this version, we're gonna go run through how to program for CrossFit strength, um, which will cover the next section of the movements. So you've got Metcons, then you'll have strength, then you'll have your accessory movements. So we'll go through all three and then how to program a block CrossFit will be the future videos. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and as always, you guys at home, stay obese.